Amen. Thank you, Brother Tony, for uh, uh, that introduction. But thank you for uh, inviting me to come. When he called a few weeks ago or a month or so ago and asked me if I would come, uh, I just, like a little kid in a candy shop, I was just on, just excited about, uh, we hear from one another every now and then, we got a mutual friend that would come up every now and then from Guyana, South America, and Brother Pulalal, and uh, last time I think we had some interaction, we was shuffling him back and forth, and uh, when he called and asked me to come, I, I really... Uh, was excited and still excited about just the opportunity to share uh, with uh, the place where God has planted him. He's my brother in Christ. Uh, and as he was saying, we had a lot of memories from Lexington Baptist College and the teachers, the professors that we had there uh, give us a foundation that we could stand on uh, in, in trying times. I don't think any of us that were students at the time had any inkling of an idea of the times, the, the turmoil and the, the difficulties of ministering and uh, pastoring and preaching. But God has been faithful to us and has, has taken care of us through the storms through the wind and through the rain, <laughs> through the fires. He's, he's, he's watched over us. And uh, he talked about going to Canada. We, we would take a yearly trip to Canada to uh, just get away and relax and have, uh, uh, well, if we had hair, we'd let our hair down a little bit and just enjoy fishing. And Adam was about the size of him. When we was going up there and... Uh, uh, tell a story on him and we had canoed across the world we portaged to go over in this other lake that we, we call Lake X we couldn't tell nobody what it was because we wanted to keep it a secret and we done canoed across and uh, uh, Brother Tony had all of his kids up there, three girls and a boy and his wife and looked up and uh, Adam done fell off the rock wall into the water and uh, we started screaming and said, no, that's a, that's a character building experience. That's a character building experience. Had a life jacket on, but uh, man, great times, great times. We out there, we cooking and enjoying and fellowshipping with each other. And uh, there's some fond members, brother. And uh, I'm, I'm thankful for, for those that we, we shared together. And I thank for your faithfulness to the Lord uh, in ministry. For a few moments this evening, I want to invite your attention to Daniel chapter 5. I'm going to read a few verses <clears throat> from Daniel 5, beginning at verse 25. Daniel chapter 5, verse 25, through the end of the chapter. And the Bible says, And this is the writing that was written, Many, many tickle Euphrasin. This is the interpretation of the thing. Many, God has numbered thy kingdom and finished it. Tekel, thou art weighed in the balances and are found wanting. Perez, thy kingdom is divided and given to the Medes and Persians. Then commanded Belshazzar, and they clothed Daniel with scarlet, put a chain of gold about his neck and made a proclamation concerning him that he should be the third ruler in the kingdom. In that night, Belshazzar, the king of the Chaldeans, was, of the, was slain and Darius of the Median took the kingdom, being about three score and two years Old. May God bless the reading, the hearing, but most of all the doing of his holy and divine will. From, from that 27th verse, it says, Tekel, thou art weighed in the balances 
and are found wanting. I want to use for a thought for a few moments this evening. These are times that try men's souls. Amen. These are times that try men's souls. In 1776, a writer, a politician, uh, by the name of Thomas Paine, he was an atheist, so I'm not quoting him because of his godly views. I'm just quoting him because uh, in his 47-page uh, pamphlet called The Common Sense, he wrote uh, concerning uh, the 13 original colonies uh, endeavor to break away from Britain and thus issued into the Revolutionary War. And they wanted their independence. And Thomas Paine, considered to be one of the founding fathers, wrote in that pamphlet, and he began it by saying, These are times that try men's souls. Amen. It's been 246 years since those words were penned by Thomas Paine. And I believe that you would concur with me that they are just as relevant today as they were when he penned them in 1776. These are perilous times. These are times of great difficulty. 246 years later, we once again find ourselves in a crisis, a crisis that is trying our very souls. Rather than battling the tyranny of King George of England, we are battling the tyranny of of coronavirus. We're battling the tyranny of high food costs and gasoline prices. We're battling the tyranny of mass shootings. Seems like every day there's a, another shooting somewhere. Even so, come quickly, Lord Jesus. We're, by, we're battling the tyranny of civil unrest. We're battling the tyranny of no commitment to the cause of Christ. And the list can go on and on and on. We're living in difficult times. We're living in times that we can say that we've not gone this way before. But I'll tell you that there's nothing that surprises our Heavenly Father. And we ought to pray the prayer uh, of saints of old. They would pray the prayer, a short but sincere prayer. Lord, what we know not, teach us. And Lord, what we have not, give us. And Lord, what we are not, make us. Amen. That, that's, that's the resounding thing that we ought to uh, repeat uh, in our congregations, in our churches, and know that uh, if it wasn't for uh, the hand of God, on America and on the world, we would all perish. If it wasn't for the hand of God in our lives, we would all be most miserable. Amen. And I thank God that he has not uh, turned and walked away. Amen. I'm glad tonight that God has not left us to ourselves. Amen. 
It would be total destruction if I was my own boss. <laughs> if, I, if I was accountable to no one but me, I would have perished. Yes, you and I both would have perished a long time ago. These, these are difficult times. These are trying times. We're, we're in, a, we're in a, a, a state in our society where we want to have religion without the Holy Ghost. We want to have Christianity without Christ. And we want to have forgiveness without repentance. God is, is no respecter of person. We want to have salvation without regeneration. We want to have politics without God. We want to have, in our society, heaven without hell. We're living in difficult times. We're living in hard times. We're living in times that really try men's souls. We, we, we've left our, we left our first love. And we got to get back to the point of making the, the things that God wants us to have priority in our life. He wants first place. He wants to have preeminence in our lives and he wants our very best and not seconds or thirds. He wants our best. Amen. We need to keep the main thing the main thing. Amen. And the main thing is always the same thing. And the same thing is always the plain thing. It's Jesus. Amen. It's Jesus. Amen. It's Jesus. Amen. We need to keep Jesus... Uh, in, in all the facets of our lives and our communities and I think that's the downfall of any community or any country that is the downfall of the world that we've taken Jesus out of all that we do that's right. many of us no, no not many all of us all of us are hurting for some reason to some degree, uh, our heavenly goals should be focused on Jesus Christ. <laughs> we look at our situations in life and our ambitions, our desires, and it seems like that we are in a dark place. It seems like that it's midnight in our lives with all the turmoil and all the Darkness and all the pain and the suffering and the sickness and the heartache and the burdens. It's difficult. It's a difficult times. And I, I look at, uh, at the scales in life and when we have so many, so many things that are weighing us down, we better have something on the other side of the scales that can balance the pain and the suffering and the sorrow. We better have the joy of knowing Jesus Christ as our personal Savior to balance the heartaches and the pain and the sorrows. I don't know how people make it in life. I, well, they don't make it in life without Jesus Christ being the center of their life. We have sickness in our homes. We have loved ones languishing with pain as we watch them through our weeping and tear-filled eyes. We see our loved ones going through it. I know in our family we, we've had some problems, we have some difficulties, we have some pain, some suffering. We, we've had people in our families that had to have surgery and had to have some different things going on. And, and, and I know it's just not my... I know we all are going through some things. But if Jesus Christ is the center of your life, you'll be able to make it through. Amen. You'll be able to get through the, 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 the hard days, the difficult days. And we'll be able to know that Jesus Christ uh, sits high, still sits high, 
and he looks low. He looks and knows everything that we stand in need of. Amen. And I'm grateful to God. I'm grateful to God tonight for that. Amen. And, uh, and I know that, that you are too. Yes. We are believers and we know that God sometimes tests us. He tries us. You know, listen, uh, Satan tempts us to bring out the worst in us. But God tests us to bring out the best in us. Amen. And we have to realize that this is only a test. We're going through some things. Uh, we're in training for reigning with Christ. Amen. We're just, we're just uh, this is only a test. <laughs> the, the national bro weather broadcast system, uh, every now and then they go through and say, this is only a test. Amen. This... <laughs> This too shall come to pass. We have a brighter days ahead. You know, listen, <laughs> and I understand the scriptures a little bit more as I journey through. Uh, and, and just like things like uh, weeping may endure through the night, but joy is going to come in the morning. Amen. Uh, a brighter day is coming. Listen, I know that we're going, I know these are times that are trying our souls. I know that there's difficulty. I know that there's pain and suffering and sorrow. But remember, you remember Job? <laughs> Look at the scale that he was weighed in. Uh, what weight of affliction that he suffered. He had a wife that said, why don't you just curse God and die? Now, Miss Job, you know that's not the way God's people do. Job uh, wavered a little bit in his faith and it took him a while to have, we want the patience of Job, you gotta be careful what you pray for because sometimes patience, if you pray for, for patience, you gotta go through some things to develop that. It just don't come uh, overnight. But Job went through some things, some afflictions and some, some troubles. He had a most difficult life. He lost all of his children, his wealth, he lost his health. And sometimes when we get to the point of despair, we just want to throw in the towel. But Job said, no, I'm not going to do that. Can you, can you say like Job, the Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I'm telling you, we got to, we in a point in our lives where we need to, the reassurance of the favor of God in our lives. Sometimes it may be the darkest hour. Sometimes we don't see the light at the end of the tunnel. Sometimes we don't see God's countenance smiling upon us. But listen, he's not far away. He's right there with you. He'll bless you. Amen. Yeah, yeah. Can you, can you submit to the will of God? Can I submit to the word of God and the will of God without murmuring? <laughs> Can you say like Job, <laughs> though he slay me, <laughs> yet will I trust him? Amen. Remember, if, <laughs> if your religion won't stand the test of a little adversity, then it won't stand when the storms really come up on you in life. Right. If your testing of your faith won't stand a little bit of adversity, uh, if, you don't, if you don't test your faith, you don't know where it's at. And I believe that every one of us in there can attest to the thing that we have our faith tested on a daily basis. You need to know that you need to know that you need to stay on bended knees. You need to keep your prayer life uh, going and, and, and know that, uh, that uh, God knows what is best for you. God knows exactly what you stand in need of. He knows better than you and I know what we need. You know, we, we, we have sometimes the notion, the idea, the thought 
If the God would just give it to me, I would handle it. But you better, you better, you better be, be like Job and, and, and learn some patience and to have the faith that God will bring you through these little adversities. If you can stand a little adversity along the way, if you can stand a little test along the way, if you can stand a little bit uh, of disappointment, uh, uh, of not getting everything that you asked for, if you can stand a little pain, then when the difficult days come, you'll be able to stand and stand with the Lord. You know, sometimes if you... <laughs> If your religion won't stand the test of a little adversity, you may be better off without that kind of religion. Amen. Uh, yeah, Christianity is not for wimps. That's right. uh, it's, for, it's for grown adult believers. <laughs> and as we grow, as we grow, as we get to know, more we know about God, the stronger our faith should be. And the more we grow in grace, the more we grow in knowledge, the more we know about him, the more we ought to know that he's in charge and he's going to take care of us. Amen. <laughs> a little adversity. If it breaks you down now, listen, <laughs> you won't be able to stand this, the test of time. These are, these are difficult, difficult days. Yeah. In our text tonight, uh, we see uh, the king of Babylon. And let me say on the start, if, <laughs> if God expects a heathen king to respond a certain way, what do you think he expects of the called out ones? If God expects a heathen king to obey him, and that's what they were. They were heathen kings, kings of Babylon. What does you think he expects of you and me? Belshazzar was the grand, grandson of, of Hezekiah, I mean of, uh, uh, of Nebuchadnezzar. And Nebuchadnezzar was an evil king. You know, God used Nebuchadnezzar to chasten Israel, to chasten God's people. And look what happened to the evil king Nebuchadnezzar. In the Bible in Daniel chapter 5, <laughs> there was, in verse 5, the same hour for, there came a fourth fingers of a man's hand and he wrote against the candlestick upon the plaster of the wall in the king's palace and the king saw part of the hand that wrote. You know this is where we get the old saying the handwriting on the wall. Well Belshazzar Nebuchadnezzar's grandson sees the handwriting on the wall and he called all of his soothsayers and musicians and wanted an interpretation of the handwriting on the wall. None of them could interpret the handwriting but Belshazzar's wife, his queen, said there's a man named Daniel that interpreted your granddaddy's uh, dreams. And remember Nebuchadnezzar he disobeyed God's command. Even though he's a heathen king, God expected him to do what he told him to do. Amen. He, he took all of the artifacts out of the temple in Jerusalem when he carried them off into Babylonian captivity. The golden cups and everything. And Nebuchadnezzar lost his mind and he found him out in the field grazing with the cattle. And uh, the Bible says that he, he grazed there until he uh, came to himself. Look what happened <laughs> to his grandfather. Verse 20. But when his heart was lifted up and his mind hardened in pride, he was disposed of and 
from his kingly throne and they took him from his, him his glory. And he was driven from the sons of men and the, his heart was made like the beast and, and, and uh, his dwelling was with the wild asses. They fed him with grass like oxen and his body was wet with the dew of heaven. Listen, till he knew that the Most High God ruled in the kingdom of men and that he appointed over it whomsoever he will until he realized that God was God. The God of the Jews was God. Until he realized that, he walked around and ate grass like, like the cows. Amen. And Daniel's interpreting his grandson's dream. Belshazzar. And this is what Daniel says to him in verse 22. And thou his son, which is his grandson, O Belshazzar, thou hast not humbled thine heart, though thou knewest all this. <laughs> you knew what happened to your granddaddy. You knew what happened in the past, and you refused to do what you were supposed to do. Even though you're a heathen king, listen, God is a God of just uh, actions. He's a just God. And he demands our sincerity. Whoever we are, every knee will bow, and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. One of these old days, I don't care if they're king of, of whatever, or president of whatever, every knee's going to bow. And every tongue's going to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. He goes on to say in verse number 23, Daniel still prophesying, said, but thou hast lifted up thyself against the Lord of heaven. Listen, you, you're in dangerous territory when you lift up yourself Amen. against the Lord of heaven. And they brought the vessels of his house before thee and thou and thy lords and thy wives and thy concubines have drunk wine in them and thou have praised the gods of silver and gold and of brass and iron and wood and stone which see not or hear not or know not and, and uh, the God in whose land thy breath is and whose are all thy ways hath thou not glorified didn't recognize who God was. You can't take what belongs to God and use it in a worldly, ungodly way. Amen. Listen, we are sons and daughters of God, and He expects us as a, as a temple of the Holy Spirit to live a righteous, godly life before Him because He's a jealous God, and He will have no other God before Him. Belshazzar uh, said, if anybody can interpret, <laughs> anybody can interpret this dream, I'll make them third in command in, uh, in all of Babylon. <laughs> Daniel says, I can interpret the dream. But Belshazzar says, I'll give you half of this and I'll put a gold chain on your neck. And <laughs> Daniel was a, a just man. He said, you can keep your stuff. He says that. He said, Daniel answered in verse 17 and said before the king, let thy gifts be to thyself. You can keep your stuff and give thy rewards to someone else, to another. Yet I'll read the handwriting. I'll read the writing unto the king and make known to him the interpretation. He said, you can keep your stuff. Listen, the world wants to offer you stuff. But you're, you're not for sale. We're not for sale. We want to keep our faith in God and keep a pure life, an honest life, a holy life before an almighty God. Amen. Tell the world to keep their stuff. I'm going to tell you what thus saith the Lord. I'm going to tell you the truth of what God says. Long story short, the end of the story is that Belshazzar uh, called Daniel and Daniel interpreted the dream 
And he says to King Belshazzar, this is the interpretation of the thing. This is the interpretation of the handwriting yeah, on the wall. Amen. And this is what it said. Many means that God has numbered thy kingdom and he's finished it. Listen, we're all headed toward eternity. Every one of us uh, ought to see that the handwriting is on the wall. This old place is not our home. We're just pilgrims passing through. We, praise God, have, have a better place. We have a better place that is waiting out. Jesus said, I'm going to prepare a place for you. And uh, when I get it ready, I'm going to come back and receive you unto myself that where I am, there you may be also. Praise God. I, I'm not a resident here. I've got a home in glory. Amen. I've got a home where, 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 the, where, the, where, where the Lord dwells, uh, where, where the wicked cease from troubling and the weary will be at rest. I've got a home in heaven. Amen. He says, your kingdom it's been numbered and it's finished. Tickle, thou weighed in the balances and you come up short. <laughs> Listen, if God weighs us in the balances under our own merit, every one of us will come up short. We come and found ourselves wanting. <laughs> well, you need someone <laughs> to balance the scales in your life. If it's left up to you and if it's left up to me, every one of us would perish with the weight of this old world. The wages of sin is death, but praise God, the gift that he gives us is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The sin weighed us down, but Jesus took care of that Calvary. He hung there suspended between heaven and earth. He gave up the ghost. He died for your sins and my sins. And now he's seated at the right hand of the Father making intercession for you and for me. And praise God. Amen. Praise God we have an intercessor. We have an intercessor. He says, your kingdom is divided. We've given it huh, to the Medes and the Persians. Belshazzar, look what happened. This is strange to me. <laughs> he said, Belshazzar, God's taking your kingdom from you. Daniel says, you're losing everything that you thought you had. <laughs> and and, and, and in, in, in the, the, one of the parables, Jesus says, there's a man that had a great harvest. He said, what am I going to do? He said, I don't have room for all of this. Said, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll tear these old barns down. I'll build some bigger barns. And I'm going to sit back and relax. I'm going to eat, drink, and be merry. He said, you fool. This night your soul is required of thee. Amen. <laughs> Listen, the handwriting on the wall is we better get ready. We better prepare ourselves to see our, meet our maker. And the only way you can do that, not on our own merit, not on our own righteousness. Our righteousness is as filthy rags. But only through the merit, through the saving grace of Jesus Christ, who hung, bled, and died for us, can we stand before a holy and righteous God. And when we stand before him and he asks us, why uh, should you have eternal life? And the only thing we can say is because of the blood of your son, Jesus Christ. Yeah. Nothing that I've done, nothing that I could ever do. It's all because of the blood of Jesus Christ. Belshazzar, the Bible says in verse 29, clothed Daniel with scarlet and put a gold chain about his neck and made a proclamation concerning him that he should be third ruler in all the kingdom. Verse 30, in that night was Belshazzar the king of the Chaldeans slain. Listen, we don't know when, we don't know how long, but we know for certain that Jesus Christ is coming back. He's coming back for us. He may come back for us individually, or he may come back when it's 
time to be no more, when he declares time is over, when he splits the eastern skies and comes back, we better have the assurance that our soul is resting in Jesus Christ. Amen. We got to have the assurance, we got to have the blessed assurance that Jesus is my Savior. Amen. Time is winding up. These are times that try men's souls. And the trying of our, every one of our souls is, are you ready? Have you made peace? Have you, been, have you accepted Jesus Christ? Have you heard the, the effectual call of Jesus in your life? Have you responded that Jesus paid it all? And all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson state. But listen, Jesus Christ's blood has washed it all away. He's washed it all away. And these are times that we got to reckon. We got to make sure. Don't be fooling with me. Don't be playing. Don't be pulling my leg. Don't be shucking and jiving me. Don't be shucking and jiving. You got to be sincere with God and know that if he comes back right now, I know that I know that I know. Ain't no doubt about it. I'm going to go be with the Lord. I know that I have a home in glory. Not because of my righteousness, but because of the righteousness of Jesus Christ. Yeah, right. Father, thank you for this time that you've given us to be able to come and to share. We know, dear God, that these are times that really are perilous. These are times that are trying our souls. But Lord, we thank you that our soul has been anchored in Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, that our, our Redeemer lives. And I know, and we can, we can proclaim it as Job proclaimed it, that in my flesh I will see him. And not me only, but all those who love his appearing. We thank you, Father, for loving us. Thank you for loving a wretch like me. Amen. And then, Lord, giving me the opportunity to try to love you back and to love each other. I thank you for that. I praise your name for salvation and for eternity. We ask this, Lord, in the blessed name of Jesus, our only hope. Amen. Amen.